Hi everyone, welcome again to my audiovisual channel. My name is Gabriella Handel. I'm a draftsman, meaning a person who draws. Actually, draftsman means like technical drawing, something to do with architecture or something. So that's not accurate, but I like the word. Uh, anyway, today I want to talk to you a little bit about uh, drawing that I recently finished versus the reference that I used. And I'm kind of thinking of doing that kind of like as an ongoing series in a way. Um, because I rather enjoy the relationship between between the reference, the finished work of art and the reference. I find it very interesting. The decisions that an art that an artist takes uh, makes when they're making the work of art is just very interesting to be able to see when the work of art is done and then you know what reference they picked why they picked it what they kept from the reference what they changed from the reference that's very interesting it's it's a filter kind of like the reference material is going through the filter of the artist's body and then coming out again into the drawing so I enjoy watching, uh, I, I enjoy seeing that relationship on in my work quite a lot and I enjoy also seeing that in other people's work whenever they provide information about their own references. Um, so I recently finished a drawing of a lion and yes, I finished a drawing of a lion. It's small. It has ridiculous measurements because I just measured it. Um, I will show you the drawing. It is very small. Here he is. I don't know if I can get that camera to focus on it. Whatever. He's very small. It's like just over two and a half by just over three and a half inches. I used Legion 100% cotton paper. Uh, that's the paper. And for graphite, I used a Stedler pencil. I don't remember if it's 2B or B. Okay. Um, and I sprayed the drawing using, using Krylon Workable Fixative. Uh, I did three layers at uh, turning the drawing each time. Okay. So, oh. Also, while making the drawing, I used a... That's another tool that I used. I used the kneading eraser. Did I use this? I don't remember. I used the kneading eraser and I also used a soft bristle brush. This one. I made a video uh, with this very brush. Does that even focus? I don't know. Anyway, the thing is that I used that brush and I made a video where I talked about making shadows and tone using a, that very soft bristle brush. I mean, any soft, any small soft bristle brush would work, but in that video I used that one, which is the one that I typically use for small graphite drawings. Um, yes, maybe I'll put a card about that somewhere on the screen, if you're interested. That was a short series that I did on making shadows and tone using just graphite, using a blending stump, and using a soft bristle brush. Anyway. So back to this drawing. Uh, yes, so let's look at the drawing. Let's look at the scan that I did. Look, I'm getting smaller. Wow, technology. Okay. All right, so this is the drawing. I wonder if I can make that a little bit bigger. Let me go to Photoshop so I make the mistake that I made earlier so that you can also see my cursor, this arrow right here. Okay, so here's a scan of the drawing. Okay, and so, as I was saying, I used Legion cotton paper. Uh, I think it's 100% cotton. And so, one of the issues, I guess, that I ran into with this uh, paper is that when I first started the drawing, when I was uh, putting the sketch in, I used the brush to apply some tone, just generalized tone to the drawing. And, mm, if you think of a cotton ball, you know that it's made of like fibers of cotton and some of them will like be all spindly and kind of sticky-outy. So 
similarly on the surface of this paper, when I was applying the brush, it was kind of like rustling those spindly bits of cotton. So, uh, meaning that if you if if I, if I have like the flat surface of the paper like this, then I would have like a single, not a single, you know, like this would happen in different parts of the drawing that I would have like a fiber of the cotton kind of sticking out like this. And so like, as, as you can see, because of the light that I have there, that casts its own, its own shadow. And that causes visual issues when I'm trying to make the drawing. So that happened and it's kind of funny and kind of annoying. And right now, I remember it happening happening specifically right here when I'm where I'm like wiggling the uh, the pointer the cursor here it happened in other places but I don't remember where it happened uh, okay so then this is my drawing this is the scan of the drawing here's a signature date and place New York New York it should probably be Brooklyn New York anyway whatever uh, okay so let's look at now the drawing. So this very drawing and the reference side by side, because I think that is a cool image. It's probably going to be the cover the thumbnail for this video. Look at those two guys. Wow. Okay. Uh, okay. So yes, this individual here on the left uh, was my main reference. I wanted to draw a lion and I didn't want the, I didn't want a profile of a lion. I didn't want a three quarters. I wanted a frontal interior view of a lion's head okay so you know choosing a reference i'm looking down at my notes this is the same notebook i was using just now as an example of a sticky outy cotton thing i made some notes about some specific specific things i want to cover so choosing a reference i mean i had more or less an idea that i wanted to draw a portrait of a lion and i wanted it to be Uh, anterior portrait, a full front portrait of a lion's head, and I wanted there to be, uh, I mean, I guess I don't remember really quite specifically exactly what I wanted when I was starting, but I wanted it to be a portrait of a lion. Uh, and this one, I liked it because there's some degree of raking light. I feel like this is studio light, I have no fucking clue, I don't know how this picture happened. I don't remember the photographer right now, but I'll put it in the description uh, of the video because I was able to find the author of this photograph, okay? Uh, and the other photograph that I used, because, I mean, this, this, this one here is the one I looked at the most the entire time, basically, but this guy it looks like he has no ears. There's like a glimmer of an ear here on the top left here. And I mean, I can deduce something from that, but uh, I went looking for a picture of a lion with two ears visible anyway, because I didn't want my lion to not have ears when I had first started the drawing and I, was, I started working on his mane. He didn't have ears and I was like, I could totally get away with not putting ears on this drawing, but it didn't feel right. Um, it felt... It didn't feel right. I didn't care. I mean, you know, it felt kind of disingenuous, like I was deliberately uh, not putting in the effort for something. It felt, it didn't feel right. So I found this other image here. Uh, I don't know who the author, I haven't been able to discover, to figure out who the author of this photograph is. If, if you no, then please let me know. I used the um, great usurper of information, Google, and I still haven't been able to decide to find who took this image. Uh, but anyway, <clears throat> the the um, this line has both ears visible, which is very helpful. It's frontal, uh, front. Portrait. But as you can see, his snout is kind of lifted. So the position isn't exactly the same as this lion because his snout, his snout or muzzle, I don't know if it's, it would be called a muzzle still, but anyway, his snout is lower still. 
uh, a little bit lower. So, but anyway, that's not really a problem because I have a smidge of an ear on this guy here, and it can still be helpful to have. You know, this can still be helpful. Like, I can still um, kind of like divine the positioning of both ears by the hint that this image is giving me. So, because for example, if I look uh, on this photograph, you know, there's kind of like a triangle. I wonder if I can make lines on this. I probably can. I don't do. I. Uh, what do I draw here? What is technology? What is this? All right, give me a second. Probably shouldn't be using this. Whatever. Anyway, I'm going to do it anyway because nobody tells me what I can and can't do. Ah, uh, this is good enough. Okay. So, as you can see, the ear is kind of lined up like this, and his head makes kind of like a makes um, upside down triangle type shape, right? With or without the ears, but then the ears, you know, without the ears, it's kind of like a shorter sort of what is this? It's like a pentagon, but still, I mean, it looks more like a. I'm, I'm gonna go more with triangle. I mean, if you really simplify the shape, it would be a triangle, right? Um, but anyway, um, yes, so with the ears, it makes this upside down triangle shape. And so I can, of course, I can also divine kind of something similar here as well. So I have the hint of the ear over here, right? Can I draw? Because I mean, do you mind if I fucking draw? Thanks. Jesus Christ, bro. Okay. So I'm gonna, I mean, I did something of the sort here too, like see the ear kind of continues like with his jaw, it's kind of aligned with his jaw. And I mean, I figure this other ear is hidden behind his luscious lion mane, right? So I'm gonna, all right, kind of continue that line like that. So we still have an upside down triangle. And so that's kind of the guide that I used on here as well. Can I draw? Why can't I draw here? Oh, because I don't have the... something. Anyway, whatever. The thing is that that's how I... that's kind of how I used both images even though this one has a different... a slightly different angle to the pose... the positioning of his head to help me draw ears on my lion. Okay? Uh, okay. So... Yes, another thing. Okay, so choosing a reference. I think I've been talking about choosing a reference. Yes, I'm still talking about references. Okay. So, as we can see with this individual here, I mean, his... What, what can I start with? Uh, we start with the ears, so let's go further in with the mane, I guess. Um, so, I'm not trying, as you can see, like, I don't... I'm not trying to make a hyper-realistic drawing of this. Um... In my opinion, hyperrealism involves just copying a picture as faithfully as you can, and that's cool. I mean, I um, I don't remember if I've actually talked about this in videos. I might have. I don't know. I mean, if you know, I think that's valuable and helpful as an exercise to polish your observate or observational skills when you're learning and when you're starting out. But I don't like that as part of like uh, the language kind of with which I want to speak because I don't want to just reproduce a photograph because the photograph already did what I'm trying to do with reproduction and I would in that case I think I would probably just take a picture and then the picture did the thing that I wanted to do which is look like a picture um so then that's why I didn't you know didn't do certain things, didn't exactly reproduce the features that are visible in his mane. There are things, obviously, that I kept, like this kind of wavy... I mean, I, I gave him kind of mucha, Alphonse mucha, Alphonse mucha, I don't know how you pronounce that, hair, you know, because mucha does like these very stylized and very rhythmic curves, you know. Um, so I kind of did that. Some of the mane is just 
um, shadowed tone, you know, shaded, degraded tone. Like down here, this is a big section of just, you know, faded out tone or just tone that changes. There's big sections like that. Uh, all four corners are kind of basically that. But then this this wavy part here, it's definitely present in my reference, and I use that. Um, I mean, I, I did leave that in and then made it kind of like an Alphonse Mucha sort of, you know, with lines of, of information about the waves, or kind of like the wave of movement, or kind of how the hair is falling. And here on the side as well, and then here too. And then I didn't, I obviously didn't want to just cover the entire surface with that. Uh, I just wanted to kind of give the main of variability of lines and texture, you know. Um, so not all of it is this uh, solid kind of fading of tone, or not all of it is this line type stuff. There are some of these that kind of look more like an illustration of hair, like these here. Um, there are some like this area on the right here that are similar to this one on the left, except that the division between sections of hair are more kind of hazy looking. And anyway, okay, so there's that. And what else? So when I chose the reference, um, looking at, uh, oh, and also about, about his fur, his hair, um, you know, I completely ignored whiskers. I did not put that in. And the little bitty dotty dots there, I didn't put, didn't put that in either. I didn't do every single one of the hairs here, I just kind of made pointy bits down here. Um, there's just certain things that I just completely obliterated. Because, like again, I'm not trying to make a hyper-realistic sort of drawing. I'm not interested in that. Uh, I didn't include these adorable little stains on his nose. I included, however, kind of like a semblance of the degradation, the harsh degradation, or abrupt degradation here on his nose from black to pink. Kind of. It's obviously not the same. I'm not, that's not what I'm trying to do. But also, there's other things on the surface of his, the fur on his face that I didn't include. There are things that I, the things that, some of the things that I left are kind of like these eyebrow-like shapes. They look like eyebrows to me. I don't know. Uh, this is definitely, I'm pretty sure this is the socket. And over here as well. I also left this eyeliner-like coloring here, and again, it's not exactly the same. So, I mean, I mean, one another reason for which I'm not doing everything exactly the same is because it's like if I'm doing this one thingy thingy, then I have to do this other thingy thing, and then this this minuscule line, and this other like. So, if there's the presence of one of these things, then basically everyone else has to come along because this one speck of information is not going to work on its own, you know, something like that. So then every, everyone else has to come along in order to provide the information, in order to provide basically the reason for which one of them is there, something like that. Um, <clears throat> so yes, uh, something else about this reference, the, his eyes are not symmetrical. Okay. I mean, that's probably the most different thing between these two images, I think. Um, his eyes, I made his eyes very, very different from the reference. And the reason is, the reference is uh, asymmetrical. Whether that's because of lighting or because somebody punched them, I don't know. Uh, but I made both eyes as symmetrical as I could. And I made the pupils smaller. They're arguably very human pu pupils. Um, I, I don't know if lions have, I don't know if they're whites, the whites of their eyes are black. I don't know, I haven't looked into that. But um, they look pretty dark here, and the line that I drew certainly has his uh, whites, or you know, his scleras, they're black for sure. Um, it looks really cool. So anyway, yes, I... Uh, yes, I left this kind of, what is that? 
And let me look at that in the screen a little bit to see if it helps. So yeah, so that is kind of this shape that forms here with shadow on people. You know, if you can kind of see, it's kind of like directly above my brow, especially if I'm like frowning. I mean, the line, the line is probably not frowning, but anyway, it's something like that. Uh, this area here, that is what this is kind of, it reminds me of that anyway. And I mean, we're both vertebrates, we're not that different. Um, and then this area here, I'm almost sure that is kind of like the bridge, the root of the nose, or it reminds me at least of the root of the nose. Um, and so, yes, there's information here on both sides of the face of the lion. You know, the not only are the eyes not symmetrical, the information on either side, whether because of there's more light on one side versus the other, and because each side has its own fur situation happening, it's rather asymmetrical, right? But there's still lots of information that can be used from one side to the to, to inform one side versus the other side, and that's uh, what helped me make decisions when I was making the drawing. So this eyeliner-like thing, let me go to this image here so I can show you. And let me make this a little bigger. So there's this eyeliner here, kind of. I mean, not eyeliner, I don't know what that is, but then that's symmetrical on both sides. It's like an echo, I mean, it's like a mirror, you know. Uh, and then there's also this line here that kind of echoes here as well. This, this was is like a cheekbone, I don't know, but it's here also. And even this shadow area, you know, it doesn't matter because there's an echo that can help me over here as well. So, and we also have like this kind of like mark of symmetry going down his face. This makes me think of like a mohawk that's kind of starting right in between his eyebrows. Anyway, um, yes, all of these things are things that I used to help me populate both sides according to the information available in my reference photograph without exactly copying it. Um, not, not copying it because, I mean, I think it could be our, I mean to look into that. It's like, what does copying mean exactly, you know? Um, okay, but then you might say, what the hell, what is up with this circle shape here? Well, this circle shape is here too, or, you know, semicircle. That is there too. And it's not exactly the same, but then both sides are not exactly the same. Either way, so, you know. Um, the information is still there, and it's still information that I can use. Did I try to do that? Um, I didn't exactly do it, but, you know, I, like, again, I don't have to in order for the drawing to look perfectly fine. Um, and I think the snout is really the area that remained the most similar. Um... You know what, I want to make more lines here because I'm amused by this and I think it looks cool. So like, kind of like the lines of the of the nose going down like that. I mean, that's cool. These are co cool guidelines, kind of, you know. Isn't that interesting to see this stuff going down like this? And what is this, is it like the cheekbones? I don't know what that is. And where is that? I think it's... Uh, anyway, I think these lines kind of echo each other. Maybe it's a little bit farther in there. Like that. Anyway, that's cool, right? Uh, but yeah, the snout was what I left most similar to the reference in my drawing. And uh, so another thing uh, from the reference that we can see in the reference... Um, I mean, that I, we can see in the reference that I kept in my drawing is the lightest lights, which are here on the very tip of his snout. 
and I also chose to leave some in his eyes. It's like this, the very tip of his snout and in his eyes, that is where there is the both lightest lights and darkest darks are there. So that is where, meaning that is where there is the most contrast. And so those areas will come most forward to your eyeballs. Darkest darks and lightest lights are all here. Um, where did I leave? Let's see. Where did I leave? I can remember. So I did not apply any pencil, not tone there, uh, on his irises. And I also didn't right here, right under his nose, and uh, I think that's about it. I don't remember. But it kind of looks like that. There might be something on his uh, beard here, I guess. But everywhere else I try to put even the lightest little bitty bit of pencil. Precisely so that it would not be as basically the same color as the paper. As the areas which I did want to have as the color, the white color of the paper, which is this, the tip of his snout and his eyes so that they would stay in the front. Uh, of one's eyes. Um, so those things are definitely pretty similar to the reference because indeed the darkest darks in the reference are here in his eyes, um, where I guess this Clara would be. I don't know my lion eye anatomy, okay? Uh, pupils, also darkest dark, here by his nose. Several of these spots are darkest darks, and this lower lip. And the lightest lights, or just white, Definitely right by here by the nose and his beard and the highlight on the eyes. I mean, actually the on his snout looks lighter somehow, not sure. Could be very similar, I don't know. Anyway, so yes, that's some of the decision making that went into this drawing. Mm just like the generalized thought process. And when did I start this drawing? I don't remember when I started this drawing. And I don't remember how long it took either, but it took a while. It took a while. I've been able to, I mean, I want to try to kind of mumble an approximate amount of time that it took and then you can speculate an approximation of time in your head based on the amount of days a week and maybe the amount of hours that I think I was working. But let's not do that. Um, you can just, I suppose you can just look on Instagram when I started posting about it because I started posting about it, I don't remember when. Anyway, it took me a little while even though he's a very, very small drawing. I don't know how that works. Uh, let's close that out and make me ooh, a little bit bigger again. Because I'm done talking to you about this. Let me know if you found this interesting or helpful or just any of this stuff. Um, you know, if you have any other questions about methodology, I have a video about sharpening pencils about how I sharpen my pencils. Uh, in that video, there's an example, there's an example for graphite and charcoal pencils um, that you can see. And also the videos for, for a making tone and shadow with just a pencil, a blending stump and a soft bristle brush. Maybe you find that interesting. I mean, that's, that's, you know, like the methodology, you know, the methods that I use for making my graphite drawings, typically. Like the uh, lion drawing that I just showed you. Although for the lion, um, as I was saying at the beginning, I laid off the brush because it was just like ruffling those cotton fibers and making it difficult to make shadows uh, smoothly as I like to make them usually. But it's, of course, it's possible to do. It's just a little bit more difficult. But yeah, that's the finished drawing. Let me know what you think. And uh, thank you very much for watching and for supporting my channel. Please remember to like this video, 
share it with somebody that you you know think to whom you think the drawing the video would be helpful let me know if you have any other questions regarding um, this reference versus finished work relationship did you find it interesting uh, and yes thank you very much for watching and remember to subscribe and have a fantastic day